Welcome to the Land of House YouTube channel. I'm Seth. Today, I'm gonna to be installing this half-inch ram pump. What is a ram pump? It's a water pump that needs no fuel or electricity to operate, only flowing, falling water. Basically, water falls down a drive pipe into this side. It will slam closed this waste valve, which sends a pressure wave, building pressure in this tank and sending water uphill. Now, as soon as that pressure wave hits, it dissipates from this valve which falls open, waiting for the water to return. So in this video, I'm also introducing something new. It's a product I am just starting. It's the Land -a House Silt Catching Bucket. So the concept behind this is, water from your source will pour into the top, which then fills up the bucket, and then midway, the drive pipe will come out to feed your ram pump. And this does two different things. You've got this much room right here to capture silt that comes in from your source water, but it also provides an air-free source for the ram pump because if an air bubble gets into the pump, it's going to stop the pump. And so having this much water above the uh, drive pipe will help you prevent getting air into the system. Let me show you around real quick to see what this install is going to be like. This is the spring head. You can see there are three different places where water is coming out of the ground. And so we're going to be putting a small dam right here out of some plastic, which you can see right over here. And that's going to capture the spring and it's going to take some water down a supply line into the bucket, which will then have the drive pipe attached to it. So the bucket's gonna be somewhere down in here and the drive pipe will head down the creek we're gonna to try to capture somewhere between seven and eight feet of head pressure. The pump will travel down the creek here, maybe somewhere around 40 feet, located right down in here. The delivery pipe is going to be attached to this tank that is over here in the creek. We're just flushing it out right now, but this is gonna be stored up the hill a couple hundred feet in this direction, right up here. And then that will have a pipe that returns down to the garden over here, which I'll show you in a later time. In order to get this plastic in as a dam, we're just cutting back a little bit of this hillside. And uh, once we get this dug out, I'm gonna use some concrete blocks to hold the plastic in place. And then we'll be using something called a unisil to tap into that plastic to bring the water through the supply line into our bucket. Not bad. Okay. I'm gonna be using a hole saw to drill a hole here to put this unisil in. This is a little rubber grommet that will let me put the pipe through this piece of plastic. The concept behind this is the grommet allows the pipe to go in through here and it will flare out the backside, making a watertight seal. This half inch pipe here is considered the supply line. And I'm just gonna press this into the unisil, go through a few inches so that I can get uh, some screen back here. Oop, that ought to do it. The top of the bucket has a 90 degree on it, which I'm going to just place that supply pipe down in there. And that's going to feed the bucket. And I wanna make sure that this other side is facing down creek towards where the ram pump is going to be. We now have the spring tapped off like a dam with this piece of plastic. We need to put a piece of window screen over here to keep debris from getting in. But you can see the little vortex forming here, which means bubbles of air are entering into this pipe. So the beauty of having this bucket down here 
is even if air bubbles enter into the system, we still have an air-free source for the drive pipe over here on this side. Now I'll have a link to the brand new Landa House silt filter bucket in the description down below. A lot of people will make the mistake of trying to make their screen uh, directly over the pipe and what happens it's not enough uh, surface area so if you kind of cone it out a little bit it prevents that from happening and even with this if a couple of leaves in the fall were to get against it it might still reduce the flow some and that completes the steps needed to get water down here to the bucket we are now ready to begin working with the drive pipe which will connect to this piece right here and so I can just close up my bucket and that will send some of the extra water out the top here. But right now, this is gonna be more than enough water to run the half inch ram pump. Now the drive pipe on the ram pump can cycle and actually cause bounce and that can pull the pipe out of the source bucket. For now, I'm just gonna hook this up and we will come back later and put some PVC cement on here. Now because that has the head pressure drop down, it actually just pulled the bucket down all the way to here. But we will work with that in a minute. The ram pump's not gonna use as much water as coming in, so we'll have plenty of extra. Before we glue this, we're just going to do a test run. So I'm gonna connect another section of 20 foot pipe to the previous section. Now the half inch pump pressure wave isn't super strong, so it shouldn't break that apart here with just eight foot drop. I'm gonna cut this pipe right here so we can install the pump in a place that's easy to get to. To keep the ram pump upright, I like to use a treated board. So I've just got a two by six here and I'm gonna use some of this metal plumber strap to go across and then just a few of these uh, exterior grade decking screws. I have a threaded adapter that I'm using to go into the ball valve on the drive pipe side. Now, like I said, I'm gonna come back later and glue all of this together. But for now, I'm just gonna try a test run without gluing it. Now I can turn off the valve here to connect this to the pump. Now it's very important to let the air that's in the drive pipe find its way back up to the bucket. So we're gonna give this a moment to make sure all of that air has gone out of the drive pipe. All right, so see the red valve that's closest to you? Open that up, but just by turning it. All right, water has just slammed the waste valve closed. So take a finger and push that valve back down, the golden color one. All right, and then do that about 10 times. And uh, let it, so, yep, uh, so push once, let it close, and then do it again. Yep, so what's happening is pressure is being built up in the tank. And as soon as that pressure reaches enough to keep the pump going, then it'll start cycling on its own. There you go. And now close the valve that's close to you again, the red one. And then open the other one on the other side of the pump. It should have a good bit of pressure. Yep. So that's the pressure we're building to go uphill. We're running three quarter inch poly pipe also known as roll pipe up the hill. And that's gonna to go to the tank. And then down from the tank, we're gonna use garden hose. For the delivery pipe going uphill, we're gonna use three quarter inch poly pipe. I've got a barb fitting that's gonna be pressed in here. The other end of this barb fitting, I'm going to attach to the delivery pipe ball valve. Make sure it's tight enough here. And 
Now, to get the pump going, I'm gonna turn on the drive pipe here. Whenever I open up the delivery pipe, water is going to bypass the pump and fill up the delivery pipe to match the input head pressure. Once that's done, I need to start pressing this valve until there is enough water in the delivery pipe to have back pressure down on the pump. So it's gonna be anywhere from 15 clicks to probably 50 or 60. So I'm just gonna stand here and manually press this until it runs on its own. The pump is now operating on its own, sending water uphill. Let's go ahead and walk up there and see if we have any water coming out of the top. To determine how far the water has made it up in the delivery pipe, so it's full right there, we can move up a little bit and tap again and see how far the water has made it. Okay. Seems like it's got water there. It's hollow. But if we step down over here, you can hear that it's not hollow. We now have output at the top of our delivery pipe. You can see it doesn't look like much, but over a 24 hour period, that right there has a lot of water. <laughs> yeah, we got one of these 90s just in case it would help it stay in there. Just like that. I don't know if it's gonna, maybe fine by itself, but. I have a two inch fern co fitting, which should fit over the threads of this IBC tote because IBC totes have an odd thread to them. And there are often several different sizes of thread. And so to avoid having to get a specialty coupling, this fern co just fits right over there. And then I'll be reducing down with a bushing to go out to a garden hose. We have success. Water is now up here, pouring into the top of this IBC tote. Like I said, it doesn't look like much right now, but over the course of 24 hours, definitely will fill the majority, if not all, of this IBC tote. The ram pump is up and running and doing quite well. Let me walk through the whole system real quick so you can see everything that we have accomplished here today. Starting up here at the top, there are the three springs that are filling up this little pond that we made. Now I'm hearing some air being gulped into the supply line, which means there is some air down in our bucket. But it appears as though all of the water that's up here is going into that pipe, so no big deal there. So a screened intake, the unisil through this piece of plastic, and the supply line is half inch, goes down here about 12 feet, and is filling the new land to house silt filter bucket. And we haven't uh, flattened this up here yet, but you can see it's got an overflow coming out right there. So plenty of water going in. And of course you can lock this lid down and uh, any excess water will come out the top. So right here, we've got the midway point and that's where the drive pipe is going about 40 foot down to the ram pump, dropping with a head pressure of about eight feet. down here to the pump itself. This is the half inch ram pump. We've got this strapped to a board so that it will stay upright. And you can see it's cycling a little bit fast. In order to slow that down, we would have to add a little bit more of this drive pipe. 
It swaps over to three quarter inch poly pipe going up the hill. And let's take a little trip up there back to the tank. It took close to a hundred cycles manually to get this pipe full enough up the hill that it would run on its own. So you can see that it goes here about 100 to 150 feet up the hill to this 275 gallon IBC tote. Now the owner of the property is going to put this up on a stand, but for now it's just resting here on the ground. And you can hear the sound of that water going into the tank. It's going to take this small ram pump about 24 hours to fill 300 gallons up here on the hill. So this tank will be pretty much full at this time tomorrow. Now, if you want to purchase your own ram pump so you can bring water from the creek and lift it uphill, then check out the links in the description down below. And also check out the new uh, silt filter bucket. That allows you to have an air-free source and also capture some of the silt so it doesn't get to your ram pump. I have linked that down below as well. I'm Seth with Landa House, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.